Hi everyone, this is Janet Simmons. Welcome to a short video about the different types of adult learning. We will start with a look at the analysis questions and then we'll move on to the different types of adult learning. Next, we'll explore how different types of learners tend to learn and then we'll look at some of the characteristics of workplace learning types. And then we'll wrap up the video with the synthesis questions. We have three analysis questions for this video. The core of the questions is you looking at your personal experience in workplace learning to identify activities, supports, measurements, and strategies. Once you begin to examine your own experiences and what worked well and what didn't, it will be easier for you to create effective training. Here I'm going to introduce you to the six different types of learning. We've previously discussed a few of them, but it's important to be aware of the different types and know what each of them entails. Each type of learning is not exclusive. In other words, you could easily have social learning and apprenticeship, or formal workplace learning and non-formal workplace learning. Let's start at the top of the list and work our way through. Apprenticeship is one of the oldest types of workplace learning. Today, it is one of the ways that tradespeople learn their skills and hone their crafts. Roofers, boat builders, and other tradespeople may sign a contract to work for little money while they're being trained. An internship is similar in many ways to an apprenticeship. These people may be going into trades, such as plumber or electrician, or they may be professionals, such as a graphic designer or public relations practitioner. The difference is the intern must complete a number of academic credits before working as an intern. An internship is therefore a mix of formal training, say at a university or college, before moving on to hands-on training. Formal workplace learning may be controlled by the organization or an association required for licensing. For example, some healthcare associations require its membership to take a number of workshops each year to remain certified to practice. The same is true for other sectors such as the financial field. Alternatively, some companies may bring in specialists to train their staff. Non-formal workplace learning may be provided by some organizations. The difference between non-formal and formal learning is that non-formal workplace learning does not result in the learner receiving credentials. For example, if a new computer system or program is implemented, the training will be provided by the organization, but the learners will not receive a certificate. You may have engaged in informal learning. Have you ever asked a colleague to help you learn a computer program? Informal learning is initiated by the learner when the learner discovers a gap in knowledge. Social learning takes place virtually and may also happen in person. Nonetheless, it is the creation and collaboration of content by more than one person. This may be done in teams, or people may be brought in only for the part of the collaboration. The premise of social learning is the sharing of resources, ideas, and experiences. This table illustrates various ways of learning. We've expanded this list from the six we just discussed, but all 11 items here fit into at least one of the six. Which ways of learning do you think are formal, non-formal, informal, or social? I suggest you pause the video now and write down your answers. Okay, let's see the answers. Fit is indicated by an X and an O indicates that the tool and or strategy fits into the specified category to some degree, but not exclusively. Again, I suggest you pause the video and try to rationalize where I've played the X's and O's. We can talk about the fit in the upcoming tutorial. This table illustrates the characteristics of formal, non-formal, informal, and social workplace learning. Let's examine each in a bit of detail. Formal workplace learning is controlled by the organization. Its purpose is to lead to a recognized credential. The curriculum is set in advance and potential interactions include content delivery, questions, exercises, discussion, assignments, tests, etc. The organization and or learners control non-formal workplace learning. Its purpose is to provide educational enrichment and to build skills and capacities. The curriculum may or may not be set in advance and potential interactions include learning groups, seminars, mentoring programs, and continuing education classes. The learner controls informal workplace learning. Its purpose is to provide educational enrichment and build on the skills and capacities. The curriculum is not set and the potential interactions include external communities of practice, the World Wide Web, and peers. The learner and the organization and or various communities control social workplace learning. Its purpose is to foster engagement and support all types of learning. 
Curriculum may or may not be set and potential interactions include learner-learner, learner-instructor, learner-mentor, learner-peer, and or learner-expert. There is only one synthesis question for this video. Why is a combination of formal, informal, and social ways of learning recommended for workplace learning? I hope this video helps you understand the various types and characteristics of workplace learners. But workplace learning will continue to evolve along with technology. In the future, there will be even more opportunities for learners to gain and share knowledge. See you in the next video.